Welcome to your online class. Do you sometimes feel like the pictures of the students you see on the screen? Are you sometimes confused when taking an online class? Or maybe this is your first online class. Or maybe you successfully passed your last online class, not with the grade you wanted, and you wish that somebody was there to help you a little bit. Well, that's what this video is all about. Now, if you get into the online class and it looks like this, and there's nothing on the side here to show you where to go to, click on the little arrow, and this will open up the panel that shows you the various areas to go to. I suggest you start with announcements. Announcements are, is the place where your instructor is going to place important information for you. The instructor will normally have welcome information for the class, uh, may give you some important information about what is expected of you in the various particular assignments, important late work policy, and all types of other items that the instructor is posting for you to read to help you through the class. Once you look at the announcements, I would then go to the course schedule. The course schedule gives you an overview of the entire course. This is a really good place to go to first because it will give you that bird's eye view of what to expect. It'll show you by week the various assignments you're expected to do, starting with any type of reading assignments or videos, showing you the discussion assignments and the standard assignments that you would simply post and only an instructor will see. What's the difference between discussions and assignments? Well, discussions, as you will see here, the initial post in this particular class is due in the middle of the week on Wednesday. And after Wednesday is when you would read other student posts. In this particular class, you need to read two student posts and post a relevant comment to the student of 100 words or more about their particular post. So you can't just say, oh, good job, Tim, or something like that. You need to give them a relevant um, comment. And then you notice those responses are due by Sunday. So when you get into the course schedule, you can kind of just browse through it and see where the entire class is going to take you. After the schedule, you're going to see a very important area. This area shows you the percentage that the assignments are worth towards your final grade. Now, in this particular class, you'll notice that discussions and weekly assignments are worth 80% of the grade. So it's something you really want to pay attention to week by week and make sure you have the maximum points for your assignments. But let's say you're in a class where your final paper is worth 40% instead of 10%. Now, you'll still want to take your final paper uh, seriously, even if it's 10%. But if, in fact, you're in a class where it says 40% of your grade, well, I suggest you start working on that final paper on week one, because I would want to get that letter perfect by the end of the quarter to make sure you get full marks on 40% of your class. Below this, you will many times find assignment descriptions, which really gives you more detail. So in this case, it's giving you more detail about your discussions and your engagement, and then the weekly assignments, and the midterm and final papers. And then basically a quick overview of the grading scale. And Sullivan University grades, like most universities, 90 to 100 is an A, and 80 to 89 is a B, and so on. At the very top of the course schedule, let's go back to the top, you'll see that there's an area with view dates as a hot link. If you click on that, it's going to show you the dates for the current quarter, which will include uh, anything as far as the uh, holidays and maybe a special message. For example, this particular quarter, normally we're on an 11-week quarter, this is a 10-week quarter. Now, if you go to the very bottom of that, you can click on next quarter, which is another link. And that will show you the dates for next quarter. So if you're making plans for next quarter and you want to know where the holidays lie and everything, this is a good place to go. All right, so now we have looked at announcements. We have looked at the course schedule. The next thing I suggest you do is click on course calendar. The course calendar is going to give you an overview of the course, but in this particular case, 
by calendar date. And so you'll be able to take a quick look at the calendar and you'll see the dates that things are due. If you click on a particular area, it'll come up and give you a little bit more description of the assignments. So we're going to just cancel out of that. Enough said on the calendar. The very next thing I would suggest you go to is course material. Course material is kind of an interesting uh, area. You have to click course material twice. I have no idea why, but that's how it's done in Blackboard. Once you click on course material, you'll see that there are four areas in most classes. The first one is meet your instructor. This is where the instructor is going to tell you some information about the course, give you some information about themselves, maybe a brief bio, but just to help you get to know them a little better. And then you can click on the syllabus. Syllabus is a standard syllabus that you've probably seen in face-to-face -face classes or pretty much any time in your educational career. It's pretty standard. A course description tells you if you needed a prerequisite class before taking this. Uh, what is the student learning outcome uh, or the learning outcomes for the class? Uh, and that basically says when you're done taking this class, this is what we hope that you'll know. And then it gets into, again, the grading scale, active participation, academic integrity, and so on. So information that you'd want to know. This particular class has a rubric. We'll go to the rubric. And this particular rubric, rubric is just an educational term for how you grade stuff. Okay, so discussions, um, we'll look at the discussions rubric. It just gives you a little bit of a better idea of how things are graded and why you're going to lose points. Many times the uh, instructor may vary from that and give you more information in an announcement to, to let them know, uh, and let you know how they're going to be actually grading and how much percent they take off for each thing. And then there's an area for instructor policies. Not all classes may have this, but if the instructor does have a policy, they will go ahead and uh, have it there in detail for you to read. So that's why I suggest you go to the uh, course material uh, after the announcements and the course schedule and calendar because you can get some really good valuable information there as well. Now, where you're going to be most of the time is under weekly lessons. Weekly lessons is the area you'll go to to actually do your weekly assignments. So when we go to the weekly lessons, it's going to show you all the various weeks for that particular class. Let's just click on week two uh, just to see an example here. You'll notice that when it comes up here, you're going to have an area here that gives you kind of a rundown of the week. First part is going to be the introduction. And this is just a quick introduction to that week and the objectives that you should know by or learn by the end of the week. Then the next area will be your lecture usually. And this is where you're going to have a much more detailed lecture. Uh, so really giving you a baseline of information to help you understand the readings and any videos or whatever. And then you would click on assignments. And when you click on assignments, this is where you're going to see your reading assignments, any videos that you are expected to watch and you'll see information about the particular classes. Uh, so in this particular case, there's one reading assignment. You just click because this is a ebook, and then you would click on the videos and watch them. And then you would do your discussions and also your standard assignment. Now again, just to recall, discussions are where you're going to post something in the middle of the week and then you'll be making comments about at least two other people's postings, in this particular class at least, um, and then you'll make relevant comments to each discussion to two people. Uh, so that'll be a total of four comments you would need to make that particular week. The assignments are simply between you and the instructor. When you post an assignment, the instructor is the only one that will be reading that particular assignment. So. The weekly lessons is an area where you'll be going to a lot because that's where it lists all the week and give you all the detailed information about what you need to do. The next very important area is course communication. Course communication is where you can communicate with a class 
or you can communicate with um, the instructor in private. Notice the first one says, ask the class and instructor. This is public, meaning anything you post there is going to be seen by everyone in the class. Um, this is where you would just create a thread and put a subject. You might say um, detailed uh, descriptions of assignments. Can anybody help? I can't find this. Well, if you see somebody look for something of that nature, you've already looked at the weekly lessons, you know where to find it, feel free to answer that student. So this is where students can help students and the instructor will also be paying attention to these and posting answers to the various questions as well. Now if we go back to course communication, you'll notice that the other area of course communication is course messages private. You'll want to use this if you want to have some communication privately just between you and the instructor. So this is where you would create a message and it might say something like, you know, maybe you're going to the hospital and you don't want all the students to know that. And so you let your instructor know, I'm going to be in the hospital for three days. I have a surgery coming up. Could I get some extra time for the assignment or something of that nature? And then when the reply comes, the reply is going to go to just you as well. So this is private communication. And then the last place you'd want to go, obviously, is your grades. You'd want to check on your grades. So this is where you're going to see your grades and any grade comments. I highly suggest any time you get a grade, you read the grade comments because instructors will be giving you information uh, as far as what you did wrong. Some instructors might say, uh, feel free to make corrections and repost for more points. So you definitely want to read that. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and I really hope that going through this introductory video will start you out on the right track. So you'll go from maybe a confused student to an A student who thoroughly enjoys the journey. Thank you for listening and good luck on your course.